Also, a disclaimer for the series, keep in mind that there's always some value to opening it up yourself and just enjoying the opening. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about monetary value. Will you make your money back? All that stuff. Do you have a chance to make your money back? If it's just about having fun, obviously that's an option. That's a, a reason to open something. But keep in mind, that's not what we're talking about in the series. We also do have a giveaway in this video. I'll be giving away this Legend of Blue Eyes Raigeki. All you have to do like this video, be subscribed, and let me know if you want to see more Worth It or Not on the channel, and let's get into it. What's up, guys? We're back with a new series called Worth It or Not, where I review your posts on Reddit of your cards that you want to grade, as well as stuff you might consider opening, and I let you know, is it worth it or is it not? There are a ton of posts on here, so if you guys want to be a part of a future episode, check out r slash ruxin34 on Reddit. Make a post of a card that you're thinking about grading or something you're thinking about opening. I'll review it and let you know if it's worth it. All right, guys, let's hop into the very first one at the very top of the Reddit page. We have, worth it or not, Starlight Shooting Majestic Star Dragon with print line from left to right, circled in red, PSA grading. So we're trying to see, is this thing worth grading right now? So as of right now, PSA grading is $200 at the minimum. So we got to take that into account as we're reviewing this card. We don't have a great view of this thing because, you know, just the limits of technology. But here we go. The back looks super clean. Okay, that looks really good. Where's the print line? He said he circled it. There it is. Okay, very small print line right there. So this is something that could escape. And if that's the only thing wrong with the card, it could get the 10. So I'm thinking based on this card, the centering appears to be pretty good. You guys see that? The centering's pretty good all around. So this is the perfect video to show you guys what centering is. You guys see this border right here? I can actually use a mouse versus this border. That's the centering. If it is, if this side is very large, it comes way out here and this side's super skinny, that's way off center. So you want it to be where these sides are equal as well as this top part versus the bottom part. So this centering looks pretty good. It looks like it's within the PSA standards. So from what I'm looking at, I think this thing has a chance at a 10. Now, does having a chance at a 10 mean that it's worth it? Not necessarily. We need to find out what the card's worth. All right, so we've searched up the Shooting Majestic Star Dragon Starlight Rare, and we have a value right off the bat. We have sales down here. So the cheapest one recently was $174.20. The cheapest available is $171. So we're looking at about a $170 card. With this info, we now know it's a $170 card. We know it costs 200 to grade. So you're thinking, okay, more to grade than the actual value. That's something you need to take into account. Now, because this is a new card, there probably are not any sales for the PSA 9s or 10s, which is something we would normally look at. Because there's not, we have to do some ballpark guessing. Will the value of this card be increased by at least $200 at the worst? So 9 is worst case scenario for this card. Will this card be worth $370 if it gets a 9? So there is somewhat of a risk when grading this one because we don't know the values of 9s and 10s. But I have a strong feeling that a Starlight and a PSA 9 would probably sell for about $370, which is a $200 increase which would be worst case scenario for this card. So I'm gonna put my stamp on worth it for this one. On to number two, we have a very similar card. So we kind of did the breakdown here. We kind of know off the top of our head, Stardust is worth about $600. And I also saw a PSA 9 sell for 900 and something dollars. Therefore it went up about $300. We don't have to do a lot of research on this one because we just did it on the last one. This card's gonna go up by more than $200 if it gets a nine. We only need to check the condition. So let's check it out. Front looks good, centering looks pretty good. Back looks fairly clean. We only have two picks. I don't have it on hand. I can't promise that there's not a scratch or there's not some sort of print line that I can't see or anything like that. But from what I can tell, it looks like about the same condition as the last one. Definitely worth it to send it in. All right, now we have an, a little bit of an older card here. Let's check this one out. Worth it or not, off center, but otherwise flawless. Okay, this one's posted by Dyson. We have an unlimited SDY Dark Magician. So from what I can tell from the video, it seems like it's around near mint. It's really hard to tell over video sometimes but it seems like it's a rounded near mint card, maybe even a little better. So let's do some research. What's an SDY Dark Magician worth? On TCG, if we filter just to near mint versions, the lowest is a $17 copy, but none of these are verified sellers. So I'm gonna make it a verified seller. It's gonna be about a $20 card in near mint. Now, because this is an older card and there's probably a lot of sales at like nines and tens, we're gonna check it out and we're gonna see what the value is for nines and tens. So right now, we can see on the listings, there is a nine, that's first edition. We have to look for unlimited. So let's go to sold. So if you guys don't know this little trick on eBay, you can go down to sold listings down here. The problem with sold listings, a lot of times they're not accurate, but we can take what we can from here. So right now we have unlimited PSA nine, 
$310. So we saw it was a $20 card. The grading cost is $200. If it gets a nine, it's worth $310. However, I don't know because it's an older card if it's guaranteed to get the nine. I would have to have the card on hand, but it could get the eight. So we want to look into the eight. So if you do get an eight, it's $81. So think about that $20 card. You pay 200. You only go up $60. You just lost $140. So that I would say is probably worst case scenario for that card. So worst case is not looking good. However, there is the chance of the 10. It looks like a PSA 10 would be worth about $1,600. This was in June. So it's probably come down a little bit because the market's come down. So maybe like $1,300, $1,200, maybe $1,000. I don't know. So what we're looking at a range of $80 to $1,000. Getting a 10 is pretty tough, especially on an older card. So I would say it's more likely you actually end up with an eight than a 10. So for this one, I've got to say for the $200 cost, I've got to go not worth it. All right, on this post right here by uh, Jalen Hamilton, he posted some really cool cards, um, but we don't have pictures of them. I mean, they're just in top loaders and, and card savers, so I can't tell what condition they are. They're obviously really nice cards, like first edition Stardust. We got Ultimate Rare, Cyber Dragon, Elements Hero, Shining Flare, Wingman. So those are all really cool cards. If they're in like mint condition, they're worth sending. But if they're like PSA 5s, I, I would say not worth it. So I'm just going to have a general broad. If they're mint condition, yeah, go ahead and send them in. If they're not, then no. For this uh, Feather Shot, I probably would not send it in for $200, no matter what the condition is. The Chaos Emperor, I would only send it in if it has a chance at the PSA 10. Jay Gala put Retro Pack Scapegoat that sat in a folder for years. I learned it was worth something a day. I discovered Ruxin's channel. This is an expensive card. So if you guys don't know, this is a very popular card because of GOAT format. It's considered the highest rarity for Scapegoat, so it's super expensive. Let's just check the price. I just want to know what it is, to be honest. Also, another trick on TCG Player, all the sets are over here. So if you just check off Retro Pack 1, it brings you over there, which is pretty cool. Wow, somebody got a play set for $106. That must have been a mistake. Somebody got a steal right there. That's the latest sales. I don't know if that got canceled or not, but that's an insanely good price. Um, we have a German version at $400 and another German at $500. So there are zero North American prints listed, which is nuts. So TCG Player is not giving us much help. We just know it's probably more than $500 because it's not... Uh, German. We also didn't actually check the card. Usually these corners on Retro Pack 1 are a little bit frayed, but it, for, to me it looks like it's near mint. I mean, at least, so that's pretty good. All right, eBay has nothing in terms of actual sales. So it looks like uh, this is just a rare card. It's a very tough card to find. Retro Pack 1 is super hard to find. The question I would ask, are those corners on the top damaged? If there's any damage on them, like maybe it would knock it down to an 8. If those corners are actually pretty nice and you think you could get a 9, honestly, for how rare the card is, it might be worth it to send it in, but you have to consider that a lot of the value is being played in GOAT format, but also at this point, it's so old, I think that it holds its own value being graded as well. So for this Retro Pack 1 scapegoat, I'm gonna go worth it. All right, here's a special one. We have worth it or not, once grading goes down in price, we have an ultimate rare pot of desire. So he's asking when it's not $200, is it worth it? All right, let's see if we can check out the condition here. So the front looks to be in pretty good. All right, pretty nice. I like it. Wait, is that a spot right there on the top? Is that a, maybe a little ding? Maybe. We have pretty nice card. Overall, looks like near mint to some, something like that. All right, let's check this thing out on TCG Player. It looks like some have sold at 90, 80. The cheapest right now is $87 for the Ultimate Rare near mint. So it's a pretty expensive card. I mean, it's not $200. I don't know if a lot of these have been graded. A thing to consider with this card is it is very playable. A lot of its value is coming from being played. Once it's not any good in the meta anymore, it might go down. I don't know how many people are buying graded meta staples like this. So that's something to consider and that can change whether or not you should grade something. Okay, so on here we have one listed. It is a PSA 9 listed for 225. It has not sold, but it's available for 225. So if it were to get the nine, we can safely say it's less than $225. So $86 plus 200 is $286. You got to add in the shipping as well and the insurance, which is like 12 or $15, which I haven't been doing. So that's another 15. So really you're going to lose like $75 if it gets a nine. So worst case scenario, uh, you would lose on the 200. He did say, however, that he wants it when it gets lower. So if it did go back down to $20, which I would be surprised if it does go back down to 20, a card like this, that's $86. Even if it goes down as a meta card, ultimate rare $20 cost. It's probably worth it to grade at 20, but it is not worth it to grade at 200. Next, we have this Wing Dragon of Raw. This is a secret rare. By the way, if you guys don't know, the only difference between the Pharaoh secret rare and the Pharaoh's ultra rare is the name. You see the secret rare silvery letter name right there. That means it's the secret Pharaoh's rare. Okay, all these picks are in a top loader, so 
I really can't evaluate the condition of it. If it's not out of the sleeves in the top loader, pictures aren't going to do much. So we have Secret Pharaoh's Bear. There's a Ghost Rare. I didn't know that that was in there, but Ghost Rare as well. So because I can't really see the conditions, we're just going to ballpark it. So as it is a Winged Dragon of Raw, Ghost Rare, we're going to start with that one. Oftentimes, they have huge scratches on them. If the card has a ton of scratches or even one big scratch, it is not worth it to grade for $200. Okay, so before we get ahead of ourselves, let's check the actual near mint price. So when it has those big scratches on it, it's even debatable if it's even considered near mint, but a lot of people will put it on there. If they're not too big, if there's just some scratches, they'll call it near mint. So it looks like 275 was a sale, 283 is the minimum, so we're gonna call it 280. So we have a base price of 280, so we're gonna grade it for $200. Let's check it out. Sale of PSA 7 for $211. So obviously, you know, it starts 285. It's now worth less than the raw price. Yeah, that's not good. You know, that's that's not what we're looking for. So obviously a seven would be bad. There is a chance for sevens if it has a lot of scratches. Eight, $385. And this was a recent sale. These are both recent sales. That would go from 285. You pay 200. It's now worth 100 more dollars. So you lose $100 obviously not worth it for an eight as well. Now there are some sales on here. This sale was in July. So I'm, I'm guessing it's come down a little bit. $791. In my opinion, basically your best chance at a raw most of the time is a nine. So that's kind of like the top is a 791. You would make a little bit on this one if it does sell at $791. There's also the Hail Mary chance that it gets a 10. There's been one, one 10 graded out of over 150, I believe. A very small chance it's very unlikely but because there is that small chance that will influence some people but i'm gonna say i need to actually be able to see if there are scratches or not if there's very very few or no scratches it would be worth it however it's probably gonna have scratches and then it is not worth it and as for the pharaoh's rare this one looks like it's about 250 low 250 yeah sold 245 we'll call it 250 i don't think there's been any sales yet i don't know if, how many have been even been graded so it's really hard to say on this one it is a pretty new card at $200. I would only grade that thing if you think it's going to get a 10 and the minimum is a nine. So I can't really tell from the pictures. You're going to have to make your own uh, decision there. But if you think it has a chance of the 10, maybe. But I would personally probably wait to actually grade that one. Next up, we have a Blue Eyes White Dragon SKE-001. This has to be one of the cleanest and rarest cards that I still own from my childhood. Genuinely curious on the grade. It may receive her overall opinion on it. Such an amazing card and love to make the video. You made it. Okay, let's check this card out from, we have four pictures here. So the front looks okay from what I can tell there. In the light, it does look pretty clean on that on that foil. However, something to notice here, this is unlimited. This is also SKE, which is started at Kaiba Evolution. That was the sort of a reprint of started at Kaiba. It was like the second version in 2004. SKE Blue Eyes was basically junk for a long time, but I think it actually has come up a little bit in price. So we're going to have to check out the price to be totally sure. But if, so far, it looks like it's actually pretty nice. The back, okay, based off the back, I'm not even gonna look up the price. This should not be graded. You see all this uh, fogginess right here. This would definitely not be worth a $200 submission. So if you see any card with foggy back like this, it's not even worth PSA grading because it's probably gonna get like five and it's only worth it for general nostalgia and just have the card. So for this SKE, I'm gonna say not worth it. Okay, we have another starter deck Yugi Dark Magician. Okay, did I just see a little spot? crease at the top i need to see that again was there a crease there okay so there's a i don't think that's a crease but there's a spot there and there's a spot there this card looks pretty decent honestly this looks more like a near mint card to me um but we can look at it i don't think this is a 10 candidate i think this is more of like a nine so we're gonna check out the prices on nines it can be really tough to find these starter deck cards because there are so many foreign versions so we got portuguese spanish portuguese you always want to make sure you're finding the English copy. It's a different price. It's, all, it's usually going to be more than like Portuguese and stuff like that. Spanish, Portuguese. All right, here we go. $778 for near mint on Troll and Tove. So that's a lot. So it's already worth a lot without grading it. We should probably check the sold and see if any have sold at that $700 price. Okay, we have $180 for three. That That's actually a really good deal. So I'm not seeing actually any near mint first edition sales. Besides that, so I don't know if we can actually use that $778. We're going to have to look on eBay and see if we can find it. So we have a near mint listing right here. I don't know if it's actually near mint. $166. That actually seems kind of cheap. Um, it's hard. It's really hard to pick on this one what it's actually worth. Let's just go into the grading and see what they're worth graded. Okay, so a nine sold for $1,525. That's a lot. That's a ton. 
So even if it is worth the $700, which I think it's probably worth less than that raw, um, that's obviously a big payoff, even for $200. Like, that would be a $600 profit if you actually got the 9. And then, of course, there's always the Hail Mary at the 10. I don't think it's a 10. If it actually got the 10, it would be worth a lot more, so that'd be crazy. Then we have a 5. It's definitely better than a 5, I'd say, unless it gets damaged or something, which is a risk with grading. You have to remember that. Uh, an 8. This is what we need to see. $650. So if it was worth $700, you would lose money. I would say it's worth less than that, so $650 would probably be an upgrade from the raw price i'm not totally sure but based on that eight and nine price just ballparking it because we don't know the raw price i'm gonna say that it would be worth it to send it in for 200 dollars because minimum i think is 650 you would get an eight so you just pay the 200 you you get it either 650 or 1500 you got a hail mary at multiple thousands on a 10 i think it's worth the risk okay and here's where we're gonna end it off today we do have an actually sealed question so we have a uh, sealed tins here uh if i missed you maybe i'll get you in a future episode if you guys want to be in an episode make sure you join r slash ruxin 34 on reddit and you guys can submit your own questions and i will try and review them there was a way more demand than i thought a ton of you guys love the idea and made a post which was really cool so this one's a lot different so we're talking about opening now we're not talking about grading so we have a power tool dragon and ancient fairy dragon tin let's check out what they're worth seal all right so a few sales here 250 260 with a slash mark, which means best offer is accepted. 260 on an auction, that's probably pretty accurate. And then 300 with a slash mark. So I'm going to go with 250 is about the value for that one. And as for the Fairy Dragon 10, we have a $200 sale and a $250 sale. So I'd say they're ballpark around the same. Maybe the Ancient Fairy Dragon is a little bit less. So a key part of opening something and seeing if it's actually worth it to open is seeing what is inside these tins. What can I actually get out of them? What is my best potential pull? It's kind of like grading, like, what's my best potential grade? What's my worst? Here you say, what's my best potential pull? What's my worst potential pull? And the worst is always nothing. You can get absolutely nothing. So that's why sealed is a lot more risky than just grading. So for these ancient fairy dragon tins, I know they can actually contain first edition ancient prophecy packs, which are very rare packs. They didn't have a booster box. There was a couple like European English or something, but it's extremely rare. You can actually look up what's inside of these. Uh, if you go to specific websites like the fandom, I believe on here you can find what's in here. So the collectible 2009, both of them are on here. So let's see. We have two Ancient Prophecy packs, two Crimson Crisis, and one Raging Battle for the Ancient Fairy Dragon 10. The Ancient Prophecy are actually first edition on this. And you also get your promo card. So if you actually get one in nice condition, you could grade that a 10 and maybe actually get some of your value back. You wouldn't grade that promo for $200 though. So right now you can't really consider the grading part. So because there's two of them, we're just going to check one. So Ancient Fairy Dragon, let's check the price of the promo and see what we would get back from just the promo. Okay, so we have a $200 to $250 tin. We have for the promo near mint $3. Now, if we go to uh, the available, there's another one for $3. There's one for $575. And then when you get to the actual verified sellers, it's $7. So maximum $7. So you're at $250 minus $7. Or even, let's go $200 minus $7. You're at $193 you have to make back. So the promo is not making back a ton. You can consider the fact that in the future, maybe you could grade it and it could get a 10. And if it got a 10, it would probably actually be worth around $200 and get you your whole value back. Maybe $100. I don't know exactly. But that's going to be a while till they actually lower the price. You have the grading costs, all that stuff. So you have to keep that in the back of your mind. It's a little bit of added value, but not much. Now, if we go back to these actual packs, you got to check each individual set. What is the best card I can pull? So for these, it's obviously Ghost Rares. You can pull Ghost Rare Ancient Fairy, which is huge first edition. That's the pinnacle. That's like the best card you can pull out of here because it's a first edition Ancient Fairy Dragon Ghost. But it's one in 288 packs. You have two packs. You have a one in 144 chance. Very small. So that's the best case scenario. Worst case, you get nothing. For Crimson Crisis and Raging Battle, they're both unlimited. So the pulls are not going to be very expensive. You're probably not going to get back much there. So you're really banking on your Ancient Prophecy packs. What you could do is open it up. You could keep the promo, maybe grade it later, sell the packs individually. You probably would not get to $200 though, even with $50 Ancient Prophecy packs because the rest are only worth like $10 or $20, something like that. So overall for these tens, I'm going to have to say it is not worth it to open them. You can have the high potential of actually pulling a Ghost Rare or First Edition Ghost Rare or grading the promo and stuff like that. That's kind of the side you're looking at if you do want to open it. However, there's a very strong chance you just get the promo. Maybe it's damage. It's only worth $3. Then you pull out of your pack and you get nothing. And you're, you're basically left with zero. So in terms of being worth it, I'm going to go with not worth it to open the tents. And that is it for episode one of Worth It or Not. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Everyone who got to be on there, I hope this actually helps you guys with if you should grade it or if you should not. Take it into consideration with all the stuff that you have not asked me about. Everyone who I did not review, maybe you can do your own review now. 
or I will get to it in a future episode, which will also be really cool. So hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe for more epic content. Next Saturday, we're opening every special edition in Yu-Gi-Oh! Let me tell you, it won't be worth it, but we're still going to do it. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be a lot of fun. And that's part of it. Maybe it might not be worth it on the series, but it might be worth it just for the heck of it. It might be fun. So keep that in mind. And uh, that's it for this one, guys. I will see you guys later. Peace. Shining Abyss. Ooh, the Revival Jam. Oh, and oh!